Greetings, people of the Most High God. Kenneth Hammonds here. Kenneth Hammonds the first, and I'm one of the three Bible teachers. And boy, do we have a great series for you for this month. We are having a celebration of Black History Month, a celebration of Black History Month, three-part series. And I get to kick it off uh, with my series here, and we're quite excited about what we'll be doing. So let's dive right in. Ah, I'm dealing with Black presence in the Bible and <clears throat> African Christians in early Christianity. African Christians in early Christianity. Perhaps you didn't hear much about that, since some people say it's a white man's religion. <laughs> anyway, it's an important two-part survey of Blacks in the Old Testament and early Christianity, a study for believers of all ethnic groups, all right? All groups should be interested in this, and I think will love all groups of believers. <clears throat> now, let me say this is a condensed series, quite condensed, actually. Uh, my wife, Naomi, and I did this series, I think it was uh, in, in 2018. And uh, at that time, we did, I think it was two or maybe three weeks during the month of February, and we presented this in detail and she dealt with the music and which turned out to be really really nice but and we're going to condense it we won't talk about uh african music in this series but we'll take you through and i think we'll have some interesting things for you maybe some things you've never thought about before where we've studied this mm -hmm. out and i think the lord will and give us a blessing for it so <clears throat> this is part one black presence in the bible particularly the old testament here it is here it is Old Testament black presence in the beginning was a colored man. <laughs> Genesis 2 7. <clears throat> a colored man. The meaning of the Hebrew word Adam, we'll look at it in the next slides, but <clears throat> all colors and human varieties, they call it race. There is no such thing as race. There is one race, the human race, as far as we're concerned. Humanoids are concerned, the humans are concerned. All of these races, all of these varieties reside within the genetic pool of Adam. You see so many different people there and so many different colors. They all resided in the human genetic pool of Adam. <clears throat> Let's take a quick look. We're just going to mention the names, give you no details on this, but we got plenty of scriptures. And so you can go back over this, take your time, go through the scriptures, and you will enjoy and be able to really talk intelligently about this. The first king of biblical history was Nimrod. Nimrod, a hunter before the Lord, before the presence of the Lord, probably it means. Ham, the father of black peoples or peoples of other colors. The linguistic study on the word Japheth. Uh, means to expand. However, I need to mention some uh, of our Caucasian people prefer to kind of link the word to beautiful, uh, but strong, that should be, Baxter and Sons, uh, <clears throat> and all of these uh, Hebrew uh, lexicons have no such linguistic conclusion. What about that? <clears throat> Uh, you'll find yourself in the table of nations when you do this, and we'll take a peek at that in just a moment. David's wife and Solomon's mother, Bathsheba, Uriah, Hittite, Black. Wow. Just a short list of women of color in the Old Testament. Uh, and also look at the genealogies in Matthew and Luke. Uh, <clears throat> McCray, uh, Black Presence in the Bible, we'll show his book in just a minute, is absolutely fantastic. Uh, and Judah married a Canaanite. Black woman, we've got other people mentioned here. Ruth, a Moabite black woman. We're just mentioning these. Some of you may say, well, why? Who are we spending on blacks in the Bible? It isn't just black. Look, look, for so long, blacks have been denied any relevance to scripture other than being a servant. So we need to correct it. So whenever you correct, you got to go a little bit further to the right on doing this. And King Solomon had many black wives, he loved them. Oh, my, he was a lover of women. All the women in 1 Kings 11.1 1 were black from black nations. Solomon really loved this black woman. Matter of fact, Song of Songs, Song of Solomon 1.5, rather than I'm black, but I'm beautiful, but, but oh, I'm sorry, I'm black. I'm... No, 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 no. The better translation is I am black and beautiful. 
the Hebrew word there can mean also and, and I believe that's the context here. Look at the um, commentary, excuse me, look at the, the uh, Bibles on the right, the versions that use the idea of beautiful or lovely, all right? <clears throat> I am black and beautiful. Now, here's where we get into what we're talking about, the colored man. <laughs> now, Adam, in the Hebrew, aha, Adam, the man, uh, really is translated the man, Adam, man, human, humanity into English. So it's a wide, wide usage of this word. Now, here we go. What color was Adam? Now, when I was at West Angeles Christian Academy, I was a principal there. Uh, we had Black History Month. Uh, and when we celebrate Black History, I thought I'd ask the students a question. So I said, how many of you think Adam was white? And nearly all the kids in grades one through three raised their hands. They said, Adam was white. <clears throat> and all the kids, just about all the kids in grades four through six said, oh, Adam was black. <clears throat> now, I don't know why that did turn out that way. I just know that it did <laughs> turn out that way. And so that's what we are looking at. We're looking at this whole thing. We're saying, man, man, can you believe that this is what is going on? my what a thing there but anyway so <clears throat> i asked myself well what color was adam let's see what color was adam here we go <clears throat> adama refers to the ground ground as a reddish brown substance i've given you a lexicon it is related to the root for edom or red ah <clears throat> dust of the ground you see the hebrew there that i pointed out for you the dust of the ground ah <clears throat> so if i had some red clay and i made something it would be what color red uh you know pretty brilliant there if it was blue it'd be blue so all both of y'all right are incorrect the ones who say adam was black there is a group out there that says adam was black and then we know there's that other group out there adam was white now both y'all wrong maybe the uh the Indians, those in First Nation in America are, are correct. But Adam had within himself the genetic pool uh, for all of these. Male is Ish and female or woman is Isha. All right, so let's move right along here. <clears throat> now, I've just given you some other things. I won't read this entire thing, but I've left it for you to give you a good background for this. This is from gotquestions.org. It talks about the number of times it is used. But in the blue there, uh, we've got <clears throat> related to Adama is the word Adam, which means man or mankind. Of course, Adam is also used as the proper name for the first man. And then he goes on to talk about man from red dirt. <clears throat> so it could be a red man. Although for me, it still confirms the insight of the older Hebrew lexicon where Adam's color is not a bright red like an apple, but an earth colored man, not necessarily Adam as a colored man, or maybe, maybe he really was so. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, we took a look at that. Now, um, some more on that. The little pun here, I went to a, a resource that I think you enjoy. The, they play with the idea of a pun on words here. Adam, Adama, <clears throat> Adam, ground. There was a play on words and they talk about how that's a common feature of many languages. Uh, and it can be kind of clever and compelling, kind of make you think a little bit, uh, but puns are often lost in translation. Of course, we never got it in ours, the ground <clears throat> and Adam. We don't see it, but that's where it is. It's a nice play on words. Even our word for human is with the Latin humus, which means ground or earth. So we've got some good things going on. So Aduma. So now we've taken care of the color of Adam. Adam was a colored man. All right, <clears throat> let's deal with some others here that we just want to take a peek at. And that is, uh, we want to look at Hagar, Keturah, Adam's, Abraham's second wife, Black, Arab, non-Caucasian anyway, for sure, <clears throat> Zipporah, Pharaoh's daughter, Judah's wife, Rahab, Delilah, Jezebel, Athaliah, the queen of Sheba, the queen of Candace. Look, <clears throat> let me tell you, Candace the queen, she is credited with bringing Christianity to Ethiopia, and perhaps the eunuch came out 
looking for that information. All right, and now in Exodus 3, 8, it talks about the Canaanites uh, and the Canaanites in the land of Canaan are descendants of Ham, Canaan. They're primarily black, dark-skinned people and proud of it. I think I remember reading uh, where they call themselves the black-headed people. They're very proud of that. But this book here by Walter McCray, Dr. Walter McCray, he's an expert scholar in blacks in the Bible and the president of the National Black Association. Look, let me tell you, this is some great information. You've got to get this book. You've got to get the one of Black Presence in the Bible. Also, there's a, a, another one, the Table of Nations, where he deals with that. But he deals with all this. Look at all these people, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, the Edomites, the, the, all the mites. Every mite <laughs> is just about Black, all the mites. Here we go. He talks about the major empires also. So get that resource. You'll really love it. All right. Now I'm just showing you the table of nations very quickly. Uh, so you, when you look at the table of nations, you won't have to try to find another resource there. It's kind of hard if you're just reading it, but you'll begin to see it. Uh, the curse upon Canaan. Let me deal with it very quickly, as quick as I can. The Genesis uh, 925 text uh, is interpreted by the Euro, uh, racist interpretation. Ham and all black people today are cursed by God, period. That's it. Yay. They're saying yay. <laughs> a closer to biblical understanding uh, is that the biblical Canaanites were cursed. There are two views. The Canaanites were cursed out of existence. <laughs> they no longer exist today. The Canaanites are and some. The second view is the Canaanites are Arabs and Palestine and those mixed groups within the Middle East who are fighting in Israel today. I think that's uh, not probably one I would prefer has a little racial undertones there if you look back in the, in the idea of it. Arthur Custance, you probably won't see this anywhere. This book is uh, out of print, not available, uh, except for some like uh, five, nine, $500 on Amazon. You know, those prices go crazy when it's not around. But and let me tell you, he has a very interesting view of the curse here. He said that he doesn't believe it's a curse at all, but actually a prophecy that Ham would be the ones to bring early civilization. They say it's Japheth, but he shows clearly uh, that it was Ham's descendants. He believes Sinai in verse 17 of chapter 10, the table of the nation refers to China. So um, that Ham's descendants are not just black. This is kind of a new interpretation by this really a great scholar. He says it includes racial colors of brown, red, and yellow. Basically any non-white group who is not Shem is of Ham. And servants of servants doesn't mean the lowest servant, the lowest kind of servant there is, but the highest, <clears throat> the giving the best service and contribution to humankind. Matter of fact, this phrase in scripture always, always means the greatest, not the lowest. So we need to take a look at that. Is this the curse or is it something else? So we are thankful for that view. All right. <clears throat> now, uh, Black presence in the Bible. This is where we're going to deal with part two. Ah, African Christians and early Christianity. Are you ready? This is an introduction to early Christianity's black prophets, black teachers, black evangelists, early African or black disciple makers. And we're gonna we're gonna knock the socks off with some of the stuff we got here for you in this one. Hold your seat because we're gonna move. All right. First thing, let's take a look at some quick points here. The black people celebrate uh, his birth. The wise men come from Persia or Arabia. Uh, Joseph uh, finds friendly people in the black nation in Egypt to protect God's son. Uh, the black father and the two sons carry the cross. The son of the cross, the son of the cross bearer becomes a believer. You look at those scriptures, you'll see that too. Jesus ministers to black people too. The Syrophoenician, that word means Phoenicia in Syria woman. The Canaanite woman, and I show at the bottom, the Canaanite, she was a Canaanite black woman. <clears throat> Here's Phoenicia. Uh, just to show you where that is in relationship, to everything that's in there, there's Damascus, there's Mount Carmel. It is up there on just above Israel. So the Canaanites, as I have stated, the Canaanites are dark skinned people. They are dark skinned people. All right. Now, let's move on. Some others. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, here come black people. Oh, here they come. Phrygia, Pamphylia, 
Egypt and other parts of Libya and Cyrene, or we, we're going to say it, we're going to Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts. You say, oh, they were just Jews. No, Jews, converts. They were converts. That means they were local people who turned to uh, Judaism. First mention, the first mentioned individual to get saved, Gentile, is a black male. The boss of the first black man to be saved was black. Black prophets in the church sent Paul out on his historic first missionary journey. The meaning of the letters NGR all through the history, you know, the, and the Semitic languages and all that only deal with consonants. And so you begin to deal with that NGR stands for black. We're going to get into more details. There's that Ethiopian eunuch. We were talking about that early church history of the church. Africa was a vital part of the spread, vital part of the spread of Christianity. By the way, just a note here, uh, there's been some new thoughts coming out on this, some very interesting thoughts. Some say, oh, and a certain group say, oh, he was a homosexual and he was gay. No, no, is that proof? They're, they're, they're making statements because they can make statements, all right? And I'll just show you a little bit of the distance here from Jerusalem and Antioch, because we're going to show you some stuff with Antioch. Antioch's quite important in this whole uh, thing that's going on. Pretty far from a Cyrene, wow, to Antioch, the church in Antioch. All right, you see Jerusalem down here? Yes. And you see Syrian Antioch, all right, 300 miles. This is basically the Jewish folks all here. Now we've got the cosmopolitan church up here at, at Syria, as you'll see. <clears throat> All right, just another view that you probably heard of Antioch. There is Antioch of Pisidian Antioch, and then the Syrian Antioch over here as you look at the map. Now, <clears throat> here we go. Antioch, Cyrene. Antioch, Cyrene. All right, <clears throat> so Cyrene and Antioch are uh, parts of what we're going to talk about now and this is where we head to more about blacks all right now we show it to you again approximately a thousand miles wow <clears throat> that's a long way to be in those days it's a long long ways all right okay but here we go now acts 13 one through three <clears throat> i only am giving this light to you i do have a special assignment for those who want to go further and you can uh, pick up the PowerPoint and you can do the assignment. But I say, don't go for it unless you really want to get into the scriptures and you want to think. So <clears throat> it's not required, but it just uh, give your brain something to deal with during this time. All right, <clears throat> Acts 13, 1 through 3, early Christianity. There are black prophets and teachers, AD 46, AD 46. Simon called Niger. What do you think Niger meant about him? Huh? <clears throat> That's how they referred to people to uh, say that they were from a certain place or to identify them of color. Lucius of Cyrene, <clears throat> or some say Cy Cyrene. So it's pronounced both ways, but we'll say Cyrene. <clears throat> uh, the scriptures relate the early Christianity, Black African participation in the cause of Christ and the spread of the gospel. Two of those mentioned are Black who lay hands on Paul. Now, come on, I want you to get this picture. These are black people. These are African from African descent people laying hands on Paul and sending him out on his missionary journey in Acts 13. <clears throat> Cyrene became the greatest intellectual and artistic centers, one of the greatest in the Greek world, famous for his medical, learn academies and architecture. Oh, do you know where I may be going with this idea of Lucius place of origin and education? You might say, no, I'm not sure where you're going. Okay, hang in there. I'll let you know. <clears throat> now, there were powerful evangelists before Paul's journeys. Powerful evangelists before Paul started journeying who spoke with, conversed with, talked, debated, reasoned, and preached, evangelized the Greeks at Antioch, <clears throat> who were also Cyrenians. Look, there were people preaching before Paul, and there were black people who were taking the gospel out before Paul. Remember, you say, oh, the Jews took it everywhere. No, you read the scripture, the Jews spread the gospel, but to Jews only. They said, no, this is our Messiah. 
Ah, yeah, really? <clears throat> so it's significant that in Acts 11, 20, the evangelist priests and reason other racial groups. Look at the Cyprians and Cyrenians. Oh man, let me tell you. So here we have the Gentiles. This is the cosmopolitan church. Gentiles and blacks preaching the gospel together in the first century, AD 46. So let's stop talking about that white man's religion thing. All right, what does this tell us about African evangelists that they're going out? Now, here's where we go. Watch out, here comes my curveball. Could this Lucius of Cyrene, Acts 30, 13, 1, possibly be the same individual as Luke, the physician who traveled with Paul? I believe it's the same man. I believe it's the same man. These black African individuals in Antioch, missionary headquarters of Paul, were great men of God. Paul sent and through his missions and used much this Lucios, Lucios, this intellectual skills and power, a Cyrenian, being a physician, an artist, according to tradition, and a writer. <clears throat> Wow, what a man Paul had with him, this great African who traveled with Paul. Man, what a deal. So my radical, bodacious conclusion, I posited for historical and biblical thought the idea that the man was Lucas or Lucios, who was most likely the Gentile black man from Cyrene in Africa and a member of the cosmopolitan church at Antioch. <clears throat> You say, oh, Luke Black is too scary a thought for regular Christian history. Luke, a black man? No, can't, I can't take it. You see the picture? This is how they're supposed to look in those days. Well, let's see the following slides about Luke. I got to move on here. All right. Ah, St. Toussaint. This is, it was written, it was done later. Yes, later in, 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 uh, in the century. I mean, you know, it wasn't first century or anything, but what I want you to see is that we've got something going on here. We've got something good going on. 1887, but still something good. Hey, 16th century. Ah, there's Luke again. Wow, he's with, uh, he, they show him as a painter. He's with the Madonna. My, my. I tell you, some stuff is going on here. You got to pay attention. You've got to pay attention. Look at that. Here's another picture of Luke, looking kind of brown. Here's another picture of Luke. Oh, he's got some color on him, let me tell you. Let me look at some other uh, great people of the faith. I must rush on here. Tertullian. Tertullian was a prolific early author from Carthage. Look, Africa. I remember though, look, the majority in America, white theologians and and those, I'm not despairing, I'm just using that term because it's true. I was in seminary and Tertullian, I was so excited. And what do you know, Tertullian is from Africa. And I asked my professor of history, church history, great professor of church history, I said, oh, Tertullian, was he the black man? He said, no, 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 no. He was a white man, he was a white man. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> anyway, you see Moses the black, the Ethiopian is who I had on the front there, former gang leader, he became saved, transformed. He's one of the great stories of African saints. <clears throat> Here's Augustine of Africa. He was a powerful intellect. Some, some think maybe the greatest intellect uh, that we have had in our time. I tell you, it was fantastic, fantastic man. <clears throat> ah, Cyprian. We just got to keep going with all these. They're, they're so fabulous. <clears throat> they're all, look, they look pretty brown to me. <clears throat> anyway. Poor Cyprian, man, I tell you, uh, the Christianity was blamed for an epidemic that went out and the wrath of the gods. He said, no, Cyprian, it's the it's Christianity has done this. So at, as the persecution arose, Cyprian was arrested, tried and declared as an enemy of the gods, finally beheaded enemy of the gods. Let me tell you, watch out for religious people, man. They, they scare you, man. They can scare you. I'm, I'm afraid of some of that stuff coming out now Chris called Christianity in America, pretty soon they're going to say, hey, you know, all you people who believe this, if you're at a certain party, you are of the devil. They're saying it already, you know, Antichrist and crazy stuff. Watch out for those people. They may be trying to send us to the stake. We don't know. Cut off our heads. Here we go. <clears throat> Here's some icons of the Black Madonna. Madonna, Madonna, my lady. Boy, she looks pretty dark to me especially on the right in the middle <clears throat> look 
Here are other artistic images. I just want you to see that the dark and the black and Christianity and early Christianity, it's not a problem. Here's an African layman. Her son is Augustine. She is an African layman. Now here's a, a modern fresco of the African saints painted on your right side. Look, there's a whole list. If you want a list of African saints, you can go to Google and put that in. <clears throat> oh, oh, just before I close, you've got to, you've got to hear this because I've never heard it before other than uh, the great scholar, my friend, uh, Dr. David Daniels. It's called the 1619 Project. <clears throat> they want to reframe the origins of Black American Christianity because Christian African Christians in August of 1619 came to the colonial Virginia, <clears throat> the inaugural moment of the Black church, African Christianity rather than it's a slave religion. Look, look down here at the red. Look, 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 look. The evidence includes a 1619 letter written by a local Roman Catholic bishop. He's upset. He's outraged because the people came in and stole 4,000 plus African Christians. African Christians. Come on, y'all. African Christians. This is this is dynamite. Thank you, Dr. Daniels, for looking at this. This is one of the most Christianized areas in Africa. Look. They had their own cathedrals, churches, uh, societies, schools, all of this, teachers, principals. This were black Christians. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. He has no barrier. There's no problem in understanding and being a part. So we've got to change that view that oh, it was just the white man that did this. Hey, we've got some Christians that were brought here. And this is Dr. David Daniels, a great Christian historian, good man of God. Uh, matter of fact, I served with Dr. Daniels on the uh, Kojic Education Commission. And of course, now it changes. Who knows? I may not be on that commission, but I am for now. I've enjoyed times dealing with that. All right. I'm closing down here. But if you want a special report, this is kind of a little off the subject, but it's about African Americans. Uh, I've written a thing called Six Indisputable Keys for the Economic Success of African Americans. Uh, kind of refurbished it a little bit, sent it out a couple of years ago. People thought it was very useful. This is only for the entrepreneurial and business minded. You don't have to get it, but it'll be available to you. Uh, all you have to do is go to the three Bible teachers and it will be there to the website. Ah, you know, there's some noteworthy justice working, hard, hard working organization I found helpful. The NAACP, you see their mission there to ensure so many things. They did with federal advocacy and education, health. You know all the things that have done, but just want you to know a lot of justice things going on. I was really, really uh, <clears throat> gripped with the death of George Floyd. I said, you know, I got to do more than just sit around. Uh, I, I've, got to, I've, I've got to do something. Matter of fact, I'm working on a little special piece. You're going to hear about it a little later. It's going to knock your socks off. But anyway, I said, hey, I got to join some organizations, got to give some money, got to do some talking. Uh, the Innocence Project, y'all know I always talk about it. I love the Innocence Project. Oh, man, they are something. They get the DNA evidence. <clears throat> and so these guys, a lot of times, folks, they, <clears throat> they put people in prison, put them on uh, the, uh, put people on the stand, say, that's the man, that's the man. They lie, they do anything they can. And the man wasn't even in town, wasn't even around. DNA evidence showed it was not him. So I just really, really uh, uh, believe they in them. Hey, EJI, Equal Justice Initiative. Oh, you probably heard of the movie Just Mercy. That was a book written by Brian Stevenson. Look, you got to go to EJI and get their calendar. Their calendar is fantastic. The calendar is a history of racial injustice calendar 2021. Every day I do my devotions and then I read the day, uh, the day's note on this. They have short entries about uh, some of the things that have happened. Unfortunately, some of the history is, is really bad, but we got to remember those when we go along. So we are celebrating Black History Month. Oh my, we certainly are. And what I've done, I presented Black presence in the Bible and African Christians in early Christianity. God bless you. I hope that this inspires you to know that we all can serve our Lord. And our Lord utilizes and does utilize Africans all over the globe to, to give the gospel of Jesus Christ. God bless you. And I love you.